dubscupseries.com. Everybody, this is this just feels weird. We're doing this in the afternoon and not at like ten o'clock <laughs> at night. Um, welcome to the SCS Pre Race Show for the um, the twenty twenty two Coke six hundred. Um, I also haven't done the post race shows. of the year exactly. Very like five hours. Um, it, it's a it's a five hour excuse to exactly five hour excuse to 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 drink soda, eat copious amounts of junk food, and uh, stay up late. And um, so, uh, yeah, 63rd running of the event, 63rd time uh, we'll have run the World 600, uh, capping off being the nightcap of the best day in motorsports with the Indy 500 in Monaco in the morning. Um, so, yeah, uh, not really sure exactly what to expect. We could get um, awful racing like Texas strung out hard to pass or we could get fantastic racing like las vegas auto club kansas um and all the other intermediates so uh it'll be interesting to see what exactly we get charlotte in the past few years has been uh lackluster in terms of racing um stuff like rain delays in 2020 haven't exactly helped it out uh, a ton but hopefully it'll put on a good show this week so um let's start off just uh Looking at the schedule real quick for the Cup Series this weekend, um, 7 Eastern on Saturday night. We have practice uh, 45 minutes instead of the normal 20 30 they've been doing this year, and then qualifying at 745, standard group A, group B um, uh, qualifying going on there. The race itself is at 6 Eastern Sunday night on Fox and the Performance Racing Network, as well as Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. No radio for practice or a qualifying. Let me see here. Go to the TV schedule. See when pre-race is. I believe for radio, it's an hour before. Um, I think for the Coke 600, they usually bump that up to an hour. So 4.30. Okay, it's an hour and a half of pre-race on TV. 4.30. Um, it's on FS1. There's a half hour there. And then at 5, that moves over to 5. <laughs> Um, then on PRN, let's see, five. Yeah, it is an hour. Um, and I think on Fox at four thirty, they might have that random like, uh, like what, like Toyota race view or some whatever random stuff that is that they only show for like Daytona and the Coke Six Hundred and maybe another race they have on Fox. Um, might have that too. I think they had that in twenty twenty. I'm not sure about twenty twenty one, but nobody watched that anyway. It's it's a redundant <laughs> point. Um, it's not it's not a very well produced show to put on uh, broadcast television anyway. Um, but anyway, quick recap of the All Star race, which um, isn't wasn't a points race. I don't really want to talk about that. You're just getting to watch all of it. I don't know if I want to subject myself to that. Um, nope. NASCAR hasn't even put out a full race replay yet. Um, yeah, they didn't even put out the highlights till like noon on Monday. I, I don't know. I think they were just <laughs> embarrassed. Yeah. Embarrassed. That was, that was all stars. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was an all-star race. I mean, that, that was a horror. That was bad racing. That was confusion. That was, I don't know. Somebody raced pretty good though. Yeah. They did. He had a pretty good day. They're maybe pulling some momentum yeah. up, but, uh, I'll talk about it more later, but yeah, we're in it. Come back phase. Exactly. Yeah. Come back. Come back season is on for the 11 team. Um, yeah, that, that race was, I, I really just want to cleanse my mind and forget that ever happened. I'm hoping this Coke 600 is a really good race. So we can't forget this ever happened. Um, my power is out actually. So I did not get to watch this race, but, um, you know, I, I was saying the other day, I was like, you know, maybe I mean, that was a blessing in disguise. 
know, there's something good about everything. Maybe it was a good thing I didn't get to watch that debacle of race. Um, whew, yeah. Uh, the first lap of the open. Literally, we're flying. Exactly. Ross Chastain went flying. <laughs> yeah. Somehow the race wasn't over when Blaney was 100 feet from the checkered flag. NASCAR threw a caution for a car getting loose um, and, and slightly tapping the wall with about as much force as like a one-year-old punching you in the shoulder. Um, yeah. Na NASCAR officiating um, that, that, you know, that, it was like the, the referees from the Saints, Rams, and FC Championship were there. It was like Angel Hernandez was there. It was it was like any NBA official was there. It was the worst display of NASCAR officiating I might have ever seen, um, maybe aside from 2015 uh, fall of Talladega. So that was that was bad. That was just embarrassing. I'm kind of glad that wasn't that was on FS1 and not Fox because if, if 4 million people had seen that and thought that was NASCAR, that, that would have been really bad. But – <laughs> yeah, so let's just forget about that. It wasn't a point race. It doesn't affect anything. Blaney's a million dollars richer. He can go and buy some more Star Wars stuff with that or whatever he wants to do with that. Um, but Kansas was the last point race. Kurt Busch locked himself into the playoffs there. Um, uh, Denny did. He, I'm saying that 11 team, two top five, two top fours in a row, fourth at Kansas, mm -hmm. uh, even though it doesn't really count, uh, but a second at the All Star race. But hey, momentum is momentum. Bad thing for Denny is uh, because of the wheel falling off at Dover, his crew chief and rear tire changer are going to have to take a four-week um, uh, paid vacation. So Chris Gapart not uh, will not be on the box. Um, so uh, I don't know how much that will affect him. They've been a pretty good pairing, um, but we'll see how that affects Denny's performance, um, if it does at all. Um, other notes, 2311, we'll see if they can, uh, uh, Bubba didn't really, Bubba and Kurt just, they didn't really show up in the all-star race. Um, neither one of them did much, but you know, thankfully it doesn't matter. Wipe slate clean, move on. Um, they both show great speed at Kansas. Kurt obviously winning the race. Bubba had a top five car, could have had a chance to win, uh, until his pit crew decided to, uh, play possum. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, so um, those are all the big notes, I think. Um, Kyle Larson is also looking like Kyle Larson again. He has four top fives in the last five races, with the only one that wasn't a top five being that engine failure at Darlington when he had a really good car, probably had a, sh uh, probably had a shot to win that race, had his engine not expired. So Kyle Larson looking like Kyle Larson. And uh, remember, the, uh, coming into the Coke 600 last year, he had the one win at Las Vegas. This year is the one win at California. Uh, he had been good. He'd been in the top 10 in points solidly all year. But it was the Coke 600 that really that really spurred him on. Um, only difference is this year he won't have won the All Star race since he blew that tire um, going out of turn four Sunday night. But yeah, who knows? Maybe the Coke 600. If he wins this race, maybe that'll be the thing that spurs him um, spurs him on. So, gonna take a quick break, or what will be a quick break for y'all. We'll come back, look at the point standings, and then we'll make our poll position picks and who we think, or and pick who we think will win on Sunday night. All right. So over that break, me and Emily were uh, discussing, or I was discussing really how much I absolutely despise the ground of Texas Motor Speedway. Um, as Eric Kiesep says, bulldoze it, make a giant buckies. I'd be completely fine with that. Um, it'd be better for the state of Texas. Um, and it'd be much better for NASCAR fans because instead of watching 500 miles of garbage every fall, we can um, we go to Bucky's and um, you know get some snacks, get some get some food and merch and and, and whatever. Have you ever been to Bucky's, Daniel? I have not, no, but Ooh, I want to go. Need to experience that. We, we need to go to Bucky's. Yes, Bucky's is. I Bucky's. Yeah, best gas station in the country. So let's take a look at these points again. These are um, they they don't. Um, also, race had no effect on points, um, but Chase so Chase Elliott does still have that uh, points lead, which would make him uh, the regular season champion, and that would actually seed him first on the playoff grid right now, even though he does only have one win because of those 15 points. He is tied with Kyle Busch right now for the most top 10s. He is also not DNF this year, so um, it's that lead right. petty, that, that Mr. Consistency energy that Chase is channeling. Ryan Blaney is second in points. He's the first driver on the grid without a win, plus 112. He is going to make it in comfortably unless we have we hit that magic 16, 17 winner mark, which I don't personally think will ever happen, but hey, you never know. Um, 
Kyle Busch is solidly having a or silent, sorry, silently having a really good year. He is third in points, fifty eight back of Blaney or uh, Elliott. Sorry, uh, Byron fourth in points. He is sixty back. So uh, this regular season championship battle isn't uh, is probably the least intriguing out of the three national series. Trucks have six guys within thirty three points of each other. Xfinity has three within like fifty. Um, and then Cup, the second place guy, is fifty back. But who knows? This could uh, this this could be. Um, could be a really intriguing battle for that um, for those coveted 15 playoff points heading in um, uh, into the summer months. Ross Chastain is fifth in points, continues his breakout season. Uh, seven top fives on the year. Really good year for him. MTJ, sixth in points, also without a win. He's plus 89 to the cut line. I think he's going to be fine. Um, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he won a race. I wouldn't be shocked if he won this Sunday. That'd be his uh, third Coke 600 win. Um, I wouldn't be shocked at all if he did that. Joey Logano, seventh in points, seventy-nine back of Elliott. Kyle Lart, or excuse me, uh, Alex Bowman, eighth in points. He is having uh, probably the most consistent uh, year of his career so far. Eight top tens, and I believe an eleventh place average finish, which is up four spots um, from from last year. As Emily, as Emily is uh, frustrated, visibly frustrated about that. Kyle Larson, ninth in points, 10 back of Bowman, and 99 back of the points leader in Chase Elliott. Christopher Bell um, is 10th in points. He is plus 48 to the cutoff. Can't give enough credit to those 20 guys. They were dead. They were below Denny Hamlin. They were below Corey LaJoy. They were below Brad Kozlowski. They were 30th in points at one point. They got a third at Coda. They got a good result at Atlanta. And from there, it's just snowballed into a great season resurgence. Kevin Harvick, who is um, kind of turned into the old uh, get off my lawn man in NASCAR over these past couple of years with his outspoken opinions of everything, he's plus 24 to the cut line right now. He is 11th in the point standings. Eric Almarola in his swan song season, he is plus 11 to the cut line right now in 12th. This is where these points get a little weird because of guys like Denny and Kurt and Cindric and Briscoe winning races and not being as high up on the points list. Austin Dillon is 13th in the overall points, but on the playoff grid, he is minus 11 to Eric Amarola. So even though he's technically in the top 16 in points, he would miss the playoffs. Uh, Chase Briscoe is 14th on the playoff grid or on the on, in the points list. He won at Phoenix, though, so he is in the playoffs. Uh, Tyler Reddick, 15th in um, in the points. However, I believe he is 18th on the playoff grid. He is, yeah, 18th on the playoff grid. Minus 22. It seems like he's had such, he's had just a way better year than that, but he only has five top tens on the year. And that Bristol dirt, that Bristol dirt finish is going to keep looming larger and larger for him if he is not able to make it into the playoffs. Um, Austin Sindrick, 16th in points. Um, he would be seated 13th on the grid right now. I believe the last winner in terms of, of points, or maybe, maybe not, I don't know, quite honestly. Um, Looks like it, yeah. But Cindric has, you know, he's kind of fallen off a cliff. He, he had a good run at Kansas, but uh, he definitely needs to perform better if anyone is going to take him the least bit serious in terms of being a um, a playoff contender. Eric Jones, who has kind of become everyone's favorite underdog, that was made very clear when he was voted into the All Star race. Uh, yeah, Denny's the underdog this year. He's everybody's favorite underdog, or least favorite underdog, really. Um, but yeah, You're that so was mean. Eric Jones. Good standing with the fans was evident when he won the fan vote shockingly over Tyler Reddick. Uh, he is 19th on the playoff grid though, minus 32. So um, he has a little bit of work to do to make it into the playoffs with that 43 car for the first time since Eric Almarola in 2014. I don't think he made it in 2015, but I could be wrong. Um, I, I don't know exactly. Kurt Busch is 18th on the points list, but he won at Kansas, so he is fine. Daniel Suarez, 20th on the playoff grid, minus 49. Kind of like Reddick. He does have four top tens, but it seems like he's just had so much better of a year. Uh, Denny Hamlin, 20th in points, but uh, hey, it's better than 30th as a win at Richmond, um, and he'd be seated 10th on the playoff grid right now. Then you get into the rest of these guys. They are exactly where... They say they are Chris Buescher, 21st, uh, minus 61. Bubba, 22nd, minus 65. Those two are probably the only two left that can really point their way in realistically because, you know, there's only about 50, 60 points max available in each race. It's just going to be chipping away, chipping away, 
or winning. Justin Haley, 23rd, minus 77. Michael McDowell, 24th, minus 77. He has four top tens this year. He has actually um, had some had some nice runs over these past few weeks. Ricky Stenhouse, 25th, minus 95. Ty Dillon, 26, minus 100. He actually started out pretty solid. He is just falling off the cliff again. Cole Custer, um, worst driver, any of the big power teams in NASCAR, in my opinion, uh, 27th. Uh, minus 107, unless you count Harrison Burton at Penske, in which case he would take the cake, although technically Wood Brothers, um, that that's basically a Penske car. He is minus 137 at the cut, as is Todd Gilland in 29th. Corey LaJoy, 30th, minus 143, and Bad Brad. Well, that, that usually means he's a bit of an outlaw, but this year it's talking about his performance. 31st, I believe he'd be 20th without that big penalty that was handed to him. Um but that still really wouldn't be um, wouldn't be wouldn't be good. Thirty first in points. If he won a race, if he won at, um, at at Charlotte, depending on the other guys down there, he would still not be eligible for the playoffs, likely because you got to be in the top thirty um, in points. So Emily, any big takeaways from that points list, uh, just in terms of guys who are already locked in and where they are, or uh, the playoff bubble line right now? You know, I think it's interesting that like it's like a win guarantees you but even like some of these guys that are at the back it's like no not a guarantee because yeah. they're that far back exactly guarantee guarantee yeah um because it's interesting that this far into the season that we've got people in that boat exactly yeah well i yeah. I, I think it's really interesting to that that brings up a good point because i said earlier you know 16 winners this is the most realistic – th this talk just gets drummed up every single year. You know, it's talked about every year. You know, hey, you know, we're going to get 16 winners. We're at – okay, we've had 13 races, and we have – how many winners do we have? Let's see here. We don't have 13 winners. No, we don't. No, okay, we have – we have 11 winners. Okay, yeah, because yeah. Byron and Ross have each won twice. So, yeah, we have 11 winners. Um, yeah, so – yeah, Blaney and Truex are the winless guys, but they're seated ahead of guys in the uh, playoffs like uh, Briscoe, Danny, Sindra, Kurt Busch, because those guys, um, you know, Briscoe 14th in the points, Sindra 16th, he'd barely be hanging on right now. He'd be hanging on by one point had he not won Daytona. Well, he wouldn't, he'd be tied right now because he wouldn't have gotten the extra point for winning the race. But um, Kurt Busch would be out right now without the win. Danny would be out without the win. So, um, yeah. It is interesting. The win in your end system, along with just the playoff system in general, is something NASCAR fans have been very critical of. Um, I, I personally think if we're going to have a chase, we need to ditch a win and end, just go back to normal points. If we have to have a chase at all, that's how I prefer to do it. Um, just go back to normal points and, you know, the 10 best guys, you know, maybe plus two wild cards, the guys yeah, with the most I think, wins. I mean, to an extent, you know, I'm a Denny fan, but like consistency matters. And exactly. if you can't be consistent, then you're not a great racer. Exactly. Season. Yeah. Well, that, that's so, the that's the issue I, I I would have with it because you look at guys like Michael McDowell last year. If you don't get me wrong, he had the best season of his career last year, but he was twentieth in points. Playoffs. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You look at like AJ Allmendinger, 2014 wins at Watkins Glen. I think he would have finished up 17th or 18th in the full season points. He probably would have barely missed the playoffs. Same with Eric Amarola that year. So it is a very fine line to walk. That's what NASCAR wants, though. NASCAR wants uh, – that. that's probably a big reason why they moved that regular season finale to Daytona is to get something like that, create a Game 7 moment while not even being in the playoffs, some, you know, miracle win like that. Um, yeah. And, yeah, to, I mean, that the thing is, like, that's okay, but also say you have a guy – say we have 15 winners, okay, heading into Daytona. Truex and Blaney, though, still haven't won a race, but they're putting together ridiculously consistent seasons. Um, and they're like third or fourth on the overall points list, and they get knocked out by, like, I don't know, Corey LaJoy, who came in 30th in points and randomly wins, and he knocks them out of the playoffs. That's when fans would really start to, to you know. And another one, Chris Buescher, back in 2016, wins that fog shortened race at Pocono. You, you have to be in the top 30 in points if you win a race to make the playoffs they weren't talking about him being locked in even, even going up to Richmond, the final race before the cutoff, because he still needed to make up like five points to get to 30th to make the playoffs. You mm -hmm. look at Tony Stewart that year as well, and, and Kyle Busch in 2015, they had to climb above 30th because they missed races. I, I, this isn't related to Charlotte, but I'm just saying it's a weird, weird system. But I, I think that's um, 
a key thing. Um, and who knows? We've seen fuel mileage races at Charlotte. That's how Austin Dillon got his first one in 2017. If we see another fuel mileage race, we could see that situation come into play where you have a guy like uh, a Busher, a Haley, a McDowell, a Stenhouse pop up and randomly win one of these races, and you're taking playoff spots away. Uh, all right, so we're going to take another quick break, come back, give you our pole position and race win picks, and um, yeah. All right, here's the part of the show everybody skips forward to. Um, we're going to do our picks for the uh, pole position here at Charlotte Qualifying Saturday night, as well as our race win picks. But before we do that, I'm going to share my NASCAR fantasy team because I think I'm actually uh, fit to give advice because I have climbed into the top 10 in my NASCAR fantasy league. Um, well, I say, you know, I'm 10th. So I am in the top 10. I'm barely hanging on. I'm, I'm hanging on by, by a thread, you know, 31 points. I am 136 points out of the lead. Um, and if y'all want to join the league I am in, um, I am in Gowan's league. That's um, like the NASCAR gamer, you know, that Gowan not. Um, yeah. So, um, and by the way, although there are four stages in the Coke 600, only stages one and two will be scored for driver stage points in the fantasy game. The garage will lock at the start of stage three. So that's interesting. I, I never played NASCAR fantasy before this year, so I did not know they did that. Kind of bummed. It's a chance to kind of make up uh, some more points for people, but oh well, I understand. It's a little easier for ranking systems. Now, um, you can still edit these until Sunday. I can still edit these till Sunday, but I'm pretty happy with the lineup that I have. Um, for my starters, I have MTJ, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, last year's winner, Chase Elliott, and Ross Chastain in my garage. I have the all-star winner, Ryan Blaney. Um, I can move him in before lap 300, say one of the guys wrecks out, blows an engine, whatever, they're not running well. Um, and yeah, for the featured matchups of the week, I picked Larson over Kyle Busch. I picked Truex over Chase Elliott. I picked Blaney over Kurt Busch and I picked Bubba over Daniel Suarez, which I think that one's like the most controversial Suarez has been a little, uh, he has been better this year, but I think if Bubba shows the speed that he did at Kansas, um, I think there's a good chance he could, uh, have a good top 10 run. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, let's, uh, I'm going to let you go first, Emily. Who do you think will win the poll? Who do you think will start first, uh, and lead the field to green, um, on Sunday night? Um, maybe Chastain. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, he's not going to win, but. Yeah. The poll, poll pick is always a, a harder thing to figure because you can't really, you, 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 pole position picks are the hardest thing to base off of in NASCAR because it's not a race setup. You know, it's what they always call qualifying trim. You know, they'll say the car is trimmed out. They've made the car almost illegal. <laughs> they put a ton of, well, they can't put grill tape on this next gen car anymore, but you know, they used to, you know, tape it all up and make it as low as they possibly could. They weren't looking for longevity. They were looking for the two fastest laps you could possibly put together. Now it's one lap. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's yeah, just, I mean, Denny never breaks the rules. No, so, never ever. So no, yeah. Um, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. But that that's the strategy in like any NASCAR game, though, you for qualifying. <laughs> no, never, never. But that's the strat in any NASCAR game to qualify well. Pump the tape up to 100. Just look up a setup on YouTube and make the most illegal car imaginable. It's a ton there of fun. You know. And you'll beat the field out by like four tenths of a second every single time. My poll pick is going to be a guy that, while not performing great at the All-Star race, is riding a good amount of momentum. I am picking the man who won the poll for the 2020 running of the race, though he was with a different team and a different manufacturer. Um, he's shown throughout his career he can adjust. I'm picking Kurt Busch to win the poll at Charlotte. Um, Toyota has showed great speed in qualifying this year. I was going back and forth between him and Bell. Bell's already won three poles, and um, you know I was thinking maybe Bell could get it, but Bush has won the pole for this race before. He has momentum, and I, I think all I wouldn't be surprised if all six Toyota cars qualified in the top ten. Maybe you know throw in Chastain in that top ten, Larson, Byron, and and you know, maybe like Busher. I feel like in Coke Six Hundred qualifying, there's always one random guy that manages to sneak up in the top five or top ten. And, you know, that hangs around till the end of stage one and is, you know, falls to 20th. You know, someone like a Stenhouse or a Busher that might do that. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so Emily ends up picking Chastain. I pick Kurt Busch. Now, Emily, who do you think will win the race? Who do you think will uh, be left standing at the end of 600 miles? All right. So let me explain my reasoning here. Oh, dear. Okay. We're, we got the momentum up and coming. We've had a win this season. It's time for win number two. Okay. It's going to be Denny. Now, Denny's not going to win stage one or stage two. Okay. He's not. He's going to hang back a little bit. Okay. Save yourself. Those people, those people have been screwing each other up. And so when they go to screw each other up on that last lap, here comes Denny. Okay. Hey, I mean, any, you'll take a win any way you can get him, especially for Denny Hamlin this year. Um, <laughs> my pick, I, I was going back and forth on this. Th this is what I usually call a boring pick because it's very predictable for everyone to pick these guys. And now that I'm going to pick them, now, now that I'm going to say my two favorites and my guys that I'm going to pick, they're probably both going to somehow run 15th all night. I am picking Martin Truex to get his first win of 2022. I was oh. going back and forth between him and Larson. Larson won this race last year, um, and uh, he's, he's just always performed really well at Charlotte. Truex has won this race two times, 2016, when he – put when he led 392 <laughs> laps uh he led like 580 some miles of this 600 mile race um and um i think he's gonna win he hasn't shown exactly race winning speed yet but if there was a track if there was an event that he would do it in it would be this one um however i do think uh larson will be a challenger kyle bush he won it in 2018 i think he'll be a threat and chase elliott as well he arguably should have won this race in 2020 before a caution came out, screwed him over. And don't count out my boy Alex Bowman because he dominated this race in 2020. He won stage two, won stage one, I think. He was up there in stage three. And then that fourth and final stage, um, he just kind of fell back on a late restart when he restarted inside the top five, ended up like 18th or 20th or something like that. Um, same crew, you know, just the only thing that's different is the car and the number. So, don't be surprised at all to see that number 48 car running up there. But I will say, if I have to go for a little bit of a dark horse pick, and he's only a dark horse because of how poorly he's been running overall this year, it would be Denny Hamlin. He's just kind of a guy he can show up whenever, you know, like Rich, he can show up and pull a rabbit out of his hat. He can show up and absolutely decimate the field, or he can show up and kind of pull a David Pearson, just run conservative, lead 50 laps at the end, and and take home the checkered flag. So mm -hmm. I think I am picking Truex. Um I think Chastain will also be up there. It'll be interesting, though. This will be Chastain's, I think, second or third 600, but uh, only a second 600 where he's actually in good equipment. Um, how how will he handle that? How will he handle 600 miles, um, you know, maybe for only the second time in his career? How will these rookies handle 600 miles? Um, back when the World 600 first started up, it was a question of the car durability. It was a question of physical fitness. Now all these drivers, you know, the cars are, they're not hardly going to break anything. They might blow some tires. You know, they're hardly ever going to blow engines anymore. Um, so unless you're involved in a wreck, your car is basically guaranteed to go the whole way unless you're a back marker. Um, however, um, how, how, you know, how, how will these rookies adjust to this? I know all these drivers now are, are in peak physical condition. Jimmy Johnson, you know, started that and made sure of that. Um, but how will Cindric? how will, um, well, Briscoe's already done it. How will, uh, Todd Gilland, how will Harrison Burton longest race they've ever run is 500 miles. Um, uh, longest race they've ever run at Charlotte, 300 miles in Xfinity. Um, so how, how well will they adjust to the, uh, the hot temps? It's, it's, you know, it's Charlotte, it's North Carolina, it's the South in May. So it's going to be hot. Um, at least for those first 200, 250 laps till we get into full darkness, how will they be able to handle that? I think that's the biggest question. So, uh, Emily, any final predictions, um, any final thoughts here? Um, and also, I guess, who, who would, who would your dark horse be? Bubba. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs <laughs> up. I like that. I, I, I think Bubba's one. I also think, um, look out for, um, oh, dang it. Who Bowman. Is yeah, Bowman too. Um, um, I'm forgetting what I was going to say. Oh, Eric Jones. Eric Jones. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah he's shown a lot of speed. Um, crashed out the All Star race, but you know, doesn't matter. Clean slate. Um, but yeah, Eric Jones. Look out for him. Um, he's uh, no, he hasn't won the Coke 600. I think he's won at Charlotte before. He's won at Trucks. He's 
one there in Xfinity. So watch out uh, for that Jones boy to be a force to be reckoned with. But anyway, Emily, um, mm -hmm. what do all the viewers uh, watching this video need to do right now? Like, subscribe, and comment down below. Amen to that. Share the video, share the channel. We are at 182 subscribers right now mm -hmm. on the road to 200. Right. Only 18 more until we get to that milestone. Let's give it away. Exactly. To NASCAR. Exactly. Exactly. I I, uh, I know this is a bit of a weird uploading schedule with with this maybe coming out before the Xfinity and All Star Race post race shows. I know it's it's odd, but another triple header week schedule is going to be a little bit odd. We got six shows this week. This is the first one of them, so just kind of bear with us here. So thank y'all so much for watching. We will see you hopefully for a Coke Six Hundred post race show. Emily, have fun at Disney World. Uh, just tell every single person there to tune in at 6 p.m. Eastern this Sunday night on Fox. Yeah, I'll tell, tell them to get ready. Tell, tell, them, to, tell them to watch this. I um, so, um, think that is all we got, and we will see y'all later.